Hi, welcome to How to Repair. This is uh, our first major live stream and I've got some guests today on the show. We'll be answering questions off you as we go live um, throughout the show. We have some questions that have already come in via email on the show. Um, oh, my phone, do apologise about that. Um, and we'll also... Uh, be showing you some technical diagrams on different appliances that um, people have problems with. Now, today we've got Barry, uh, who is coming on the show. He's from Ireland. Uh, he's an engineer with EBAC and Hotpoint Manufactured Machines, and they have their own business in Southern Ireland. So I'll just bring Barry into the stream a second. Bird, can you bring Barry in, please? and sh share screens, oh, that's it. And we also have Tom, and Tom is from EBAC. He's the chief engineer and designer. Hi all, can you hear me okay? Hi Paul, thanks for having me on the channel. Paul. Okay, we're running from three different countries here because at the moment I'm in my shop in Portugal. Uh, Tom, where are you in the country? Uh, County Durham in England. Right. Okay, and also, um, let me just remove the share screen. That's better. Um, and sorry, I didn't hear where you were from, Tom. Uh, County Durham in, uh, in England, yeah, County Durham. Okay, um, right. Well, first things first, Tom, how did uh, EBAC get into designing um, washing machines from dehumidifiers and uh, water makers, I believe you were making before? Yeah, well, we still do. So um, EBAC founded 1972. We, we started off making dehumidifiers. Um, the business got to to a point where uh, we needed something to fill the summer months in because dehumidifiers were very um, seasonal. So then we took on water coolers. We'd been making water coolers up until 2010, which we still are making them, but we started looking at other opportunities to grow um, about that time. And washing machines stood out as a for a few things really um there was no uk manufacturing um there was a huge opportunity in terms of volume and we only needed a very small share of the market and we actually thought we could do something um innovative that would be you know better for the customer because a lot of machines just keep developing and developing and, and sometimes they lose a little bit of the the what the customers actually need if you like well, one of the one of the main things that um, I mean, I've been in the industry for forty years, and one of the things I love about EBAC is they have actually bothered to make a machine now, which engineers are able to change the bearings in the drum. Uh, parts seem to be interusable across different models of the machines, which is also an important factor from an engineer's point of view. And I don't know what uh, Barry thinks on that, um, Barry. Um, What's your opinion? Because you've been selling these now for quite a while. Hello, Paul. Uh, yes, my opinion, I would totally agree with you on that statement. They're an excellent machine from a design point of view. They're extremely easy to repair. They're logically laid out and they, they are a great product. They're a great product. Right. Um, also, I've seen a lot of uh, the EBAC water coolers around Europe when I've been. Um, I was in Spain recently, and I did see quite a few uh, water coolers actually in uh, small businesses and everything. Are you making them on a commercial basis or on just just for individual like small businesses and everything, just for water? No, we make. I would say most of the um, the water cooler businesses is commercial. We have a few domestic appliances as well, but. Um, we sell them all over the world. You know, we, we've got business in America we deal with, um, Japan, all over Europe. Um, yeah, it's 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 a it's a good it's a good sort of business for us. And of course, as Brexit has affected myself personally with a shop in Portugal, because I used to export secondhand machines from the UK to Portugal uh, to make the videos on for my channel. Uh, but now that's all dried up because the paperwork that's actually involved in exporting yeah. is a nightmare, to put it politely. Um, there hasn't, there doesn't seem to have been a lot of thought put into it. Although this Brexit has come into place, I would say it's been very. Um, 
very clunky is probably the best way I can describe it. It's been a lot of paperwork, a lot of um, confusion, um, a lot of it unnecessary, actually. But, you know, we've had to just get on with it and, and, and make the best of it. We, most of our business is in Europe when it comes to water coolers. So we had no choice. We just had to accommodate, you know, what we had to. Right. OK. Um, now, I believe you're doing a very good warranty. Uh, seven years I've actually seen on these EBAC machines now. Yep, we offer a seven years uh, parts and labor warranty. Um, all of the parts are pretty much replaceable. Actually, you can you know you can strip the drum down, to replace the bearings should you need to. Um, we make most of the plastics, all of the plastics, in fact, in house. Um, yeah, it's it's all a very much a, a repairable machine, and it was designed with that in mind. Right. Okay. Uh, well, I'm glad. How, how's it actually going? Because you've been manufacturing now, what, uh, nearly 12 months or a bit longer? Uh, no, longer than that. We've, we've we've been, it took a little bit of time to get off the ground. We had a few sort of teething issues initially, but we've we've been selling washing machines now for three or four years. Um, really? And yeah, it's going very well. Um, just starting to see some real, real traction now. I think Brexit in some ways has actually helped because I think people are actually... Um, becoming pro-British in terms of manufacturing and supporting British companies, uh, which is great. That's exactly what we want. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's been going well and it's getting even better. Well, one of, the th one of my pet hates is the waste in the world. I mean, so many manufacturers have uh, been producing machines for the last 10 years with sealed drums. And it's, in my honest opinion, it's it's built in obsolescence um, because a, a set of bearings can only do so many revolutions before they start collapsing or the spider on the drum goes. And making a sealed drum, uh, I'm not going to mention any of the individual manufacturers, but some of these sealed drums cost in excess of £300. Now, we're meant to be going environmentally friendly and trying to uh, go forward with keeping the production costs down for companies, but also making profit. But we've also got to be responsible to the consumer because, you know, the consumer in 1980, they'd buy a hot point or a Bosch washing machine and it would last 15, 20 years. Now I'm seeing, and I, I see this comment after comment on the videos, that washing machines are having to be thrown out after five years, which is totally unfair on the, you know, the end consumer. Yeah, and I don't know if Barry might have um, input on this as well, but I think it's not only so in our machine we've 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 made it so it's repairable, but also we use good quality components. And I think perhaps in other appliances, not only can't you repair them, you also get a cheaper sort of um, lower quality component use. So inevitably they fail sooner, but then you've got to replace the machine or an assembly rather than just an individual part. One of the one of the questions that actually came through to me from someone, I think it was with a Bosch washing machine, um, and they were asking me for the wiring diagram on the machine. Do you actually put the wiring diagrams in with the machines on yours, just out of curiosity? Uh, no, but it's available. So should anyone it, need it's one? available, right? Yeah, we, 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 I, I think all manufacturers really, I mean, general public, and um, let me explain this in a way. I've been making videos on YouTube since 2006, and so many customers are now becoming self-aware with regards, not taking work off you, Barry, or anything, but a lot of general public now is wanting to have a go at repairing their appliance themselves because they can't afford to pay £100 for an engineer to come out. Now, if the uh, wiring diagrams and exploded diagrams are not available to consumers, then it, it's making their job so much harder for them to try and repair their machine. Yeah. Uh, Barry, what's your views on that, mate? Yeah, Paul, I believe you're you're right on that one. I mean, it comes down to everything now in uh, the world, phones and cars and, and appliances. Everything's so complicated now that, of course, Carrying out a repair yourself can can be difficult on them if you do not have the um, manufacturer's equipment to carry out the job. Well, I was looking at, or going back a year ago, when I made a video, which is available to everyone, by the way. I'll just bring this up for you. Uh, bear with me. And I'll put the link in. Uh, 
back the right screen. Just bear with me a second. Yeah, so I produced this video on the eBack machines going back, oh, uh, when did I produce this? Back in August last, last year, uh, 2020. And what I did notice was, and tell me if I'm right, uh, Tom, um, the door seal, for example, is it fully interchangeable on all the models? Yeah, so um, obviously with our manufacturing experience, wherever you can make components common across a range of models, it simplifies the whole process. So yes, the, the doors are interchangeable, the gaskets are interchangeable, um, pumps, motors, um, the PCBs are actually interchangeable, but with different logic. So you've got to just flash the right software on for each mod model. Um, right. Obviously, the drums are different sizes to, for the different capacities. Um, but yeah, wherever we possibly can, you standardize, it makes things simpler um, and interchangeable. Right, well, I've put the link up for everyone in us, and my colleagues put the link up for everyone in the sidebar. Um, basically, I've put the link to the video I've done on the eBack machines going back a year or so ago. So if anyone wants to have a look at the eBack machines, they can do. Um, are you delivering throughout the country nationally now? Yeah, yeah. Um, or, or just through distributors? We So we have... Um, a team of service engineers who who have machines available um cover the most of the company country uh, and also we've got um delivery capability across the whole country so yeah we're, we're pretty much covered throughout the whole of the uk great and, and things are going well for you back with the washing machines now yeah yeah we've we've learned a lot we've developed things um obviously learning curve as you launch uh talking to the service engineers now i must say since we brought the service engineers on board, like Barry, the amount of input and benefit we've had is has been tremendous. Really good knowledge of the um, good knowledge of the 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 you know the washing machine industry, um, and really sort of behind e button, really helping us drive things forward. So yeah, really good. Yeah, I have seen um, John is your managing director. I think um, John Elliott. Yeah. Yeah, he's the yeah. chairman of the business. I, I have seen him on a couple of uh, different bits and pieces on YouTube, and I've seen some TV adverts now, I believe. Yeah, he likes being on TV. He does. He does a good <laughs> job as well. <laughs> yeah, so we, we've we've been doing all sorts of different marketing, um, and all of it has its benefits, and it's, it's just about getting that brand known and getting the traction that we need. Um, and as people hear about us, we, we, we hear you know day in day out about people sort of recommend knee back from friends and family who've, who've actually got a machine um some of the trust pilot reviews we get you know it, it really is the machine itself is a is is um is, is going really well well i personally have one in the apartment upstairs so uh i've been using it now for the last year and the lady um a couple of doors away she has a supermarket and two children and she's been she does a lot of washing and uh the only problem she ever had uh on one occasion and i think it was down to her doing a duvet in your machine which uh, i don't normally recommend people doing although it was i think an eight or nine kilo um she had an or oh, i think it was an ao2 or e2 ever and it was the pipe on the pressure switch had come off yeah, so it doesn't detect. Yeah, so yeah, that's the other thing. We we um, I don't know for other machines so much, but for our machine, we do have quite a good sort of diagnostics process. So each, if we do get in the event of a fault, we we do actually have a, an error code shown, and we can which can help us sort of narrow in on the uh, on the fault in hand. And yeah, that can happen. It doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. Um, and do well, like you said. Well, we'll actually be making too many uh, videos on these in the near future because if you're giving a seven year warranty, uh, general public is not really going to have to get their spanners out to uh, repair it themselves when you're offering such a tremendous guarantee. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so um, what we'll do now, thanks very much indeed for your time, Tom. I won't take up any more of your time. Um, Barry, if you're okay, we'll answer a couple of questions for general public. Yeah. Uh, okay. Tom, you can either stay or um, help out with the questions if you're mechanically minded, or if you've got to go, you can go, mate. I'm very mechanically minded. I'm interested. So I'll, I'll hang about, Paul, and we'll see, uh, we'll see how things go.
Okay, so we had about five, six questions uh, over the last couple of days that have come in, and I've made some posts for general public on these. So my colleague in the back office here, Ferdinand, uh, could you put the first question up from customer, please? Um, next. Okay, yeah, I did this one yesterday. Right, this is a Beko, and it's not heating or blowing the fuse. Uh, let me just get to the correct page. That sounds like the fan of an element, uh, which I answered. So just bear with me a second. So if you do, let me just share screen a second. So if you ever come to the website, uh, we have frequently asked question section at the website. Um, let me just, third, could you remove the question now we've seen it? Just so I get a full screen. So on the FAQs, we've got repair guides and we've also got uh, frequent questions. Now the repair guides basically show people uh, in-depth videos on how to repair their appliance. But the frequent questions are actually questions from customers. So these questions come in, and this was a cooker one which I answered, and it was a Beko. So here, what we've done for the customer here is actually put up the answer for them. And this is a Beko OTF22300, and the oven uh, is not heating, and it's blown the lamp now, basically, I think if it's blown the lamp at the same time as the element went, it might be just coincidental. It wouldn't really. Can you think of anything, Barry, that would cause the bulb to blow at the same time as the element? Um, Apart from the power surge? I, su I suppose the, the most likely culprit is the power surge in that instance, um, Paul. Uh, but it, it could be a, a bad stroke of luck, too, at the same time. The bulb has also right. failed at the same time as, as the element. Uh, these things well, can happen. If Mr. McKnight is watching, and I will email this to him, I've actually put the link to the element here for you and also the bulb. And I also managed to find on the internet the exploded uh, view of the wiring diagram uh, for your cooker, which should help you. And there's also some useful videos here to assist you in your repair and you did ask about the timer as well i believe uh, yeah you did ask about the timer and i've managed to find you some instructions for setting up your timer so i've put all that on the web page for you and i'll pass you the link to this page now and also uh, send it to you later after the show via email and that was for the Beco. Um, anything else you know about this? these Beko ovens, Barry or Tom, that uh, is common faults? Oh, nothing really, Paul. In, in general, they're quite uh, a reliable product. Um, I mean, uh, an element is the most com common fault of any oven, not heating, yeah. because obviously it is the hardest job in the whole oven to, to do. Um, yeah, I, I do get a lot of questions occasionally where people have changed elements and it's still... Uh, tripping electric after a period of time. And the only real yeah. way to test um, the elements in the cooker is, of course, with a mega or an insulation tester. Um, but, of course, general public doesn't always have this available to them. Um, yeah. So sometimes you need to go through a process of elimination, and that might be disconnecting all the elements and trying them individually. Um, and also, if you've replaced the fan oven and it's still tripping, it might be worth disconnecting the grill element or the base element. Uh, these can also be common problems. Yeah. I hope that's answered uh, Mr. McKnight's question. Uh, I'm just having a read through the chat here uh, that's coming up in the sidebar. Uh, no, we've got no questions really there. Uh, third, oh, we've got another question from Peter Cox, who has a hot point... Yeah, this time of year, I expect it to all be cooker questions. Um, everyone's thinking turkey like crazy. Uh, right, so this was another one which I did a post on. I think I did this last night for him. And that's this one. So if I just share the screen. Okay. 
Right, so this is the Hotpoint DD2540. And there's a couple of variations of this. I think they do it in white and sil of silver and also black. Uh, but again, this is a um, tripping the fuse board. That will definitely be an element or short on the appliance. And what we've done there for you is put the exploded diagram completely of the cooker. So if it's your oven that's um, tripping the element, or sorry, the element that's tripping your oven's, uh, oven's electric uh, switch on the fuse board, then all you need to do is actually find the part that you need to replace here. Uh, this one's 504. Uh, so if you come down the list here to 504, you can find the relevant part. If you click on that, that should take you through to a search, which will find the genuine part. Oh, and there's a pattern part available for this as well. So I hope that answers your question with regards to that one. Um, I'm just seeing if there's any questions from people in the live chat. Uh, what do you think of Beko washers? Mine, uh, just bear with me, let me show you that. Um, Barry, what's your opinion on the Beko's nowadays? To be fair, Tom, I, I, we quite like the Beko product. It, it's, it's, very, it's very well engineered. They seem to, to last and parts are quite a reasonable price for them as well and they need to be repaired and i think they wash really well and they are a great little product for the price range that they fulfill well i i, I would agree with the door seals the door interlocks um carbon brushes all very affordable items but yet again i i can tell you from questions that have come in with general public on a regular basis is about Beko are one of the companies responsible for producing sealed drums. Um, and they've been doing it on a lot of their machines. And, you know, if the bearings or the spider go on five, six years, the cost of a new drum makes the machine unaffordable to repair. I don't know, are, are, how many uh, sealed drums do you come across now, Barry? Quite a few. Um it would be the most common failure point in washing machines nowadays, Paul, for sure. Um, some are worse than others. Some drums and manufacturers feel quicker than others. And then others seem to make drums that are sealed quite well that do five to seven years. Um, but it, it's hit and miss. But when it does happen, you, you're kind of left in a position where you, you cannot offer nothing to the customer for a reasonable price and fairness yet. Right, okay. Um, have we got any other questions there, Ferd, please? Uh, Hoover Tumble Dryer. From the door. Right, I've done this for you, so bear with me. Let me just share screens. And let me go back to the FAQs. Tumble dyers, tumble dyers. Is that the right one? NC, yes, that's the one. Right, I have had some experience with the parts. We sell a large number of these doors, and a lot of times, uh, if the um, if the door has got a crack in it, the plastic has got a crack in it, it will be leaking from the door area. Uh, I also, the E21 error code is predominantly to do with the heating system, but we have uh, managed to source the thermostat which fits on top of the heater, which is called a cutout stack. Now the manufacturers on this machine do not sell the thermostat separately. We've managed to source the separate thermostat for people. Uh, so it's the 206 cutout stat. But what I did for you here was I put on this model of tumble dryer, which is the Hoover DXC uh, 10C, 10 TC EB80. I found the all the error codes on this machine. And as you can see, uh, they're saying it's the thermal fuse or thermal cutout fuse, which I call it, and it's a common problem. Uh, I expect you've done hundreds of these, Barry. Yes, I've done my fair few share of these, all right. Yeah. Um, First thing out. Sorry? 
Yeah, I was just saying that, that, that there's always a reason for these going, obviously. So anyone that's obviously replacing this part in there, Hoover tumble dryer. Oh, yeah, but, I, check, I think uh, check the filters. Yeah, filters uh, most important. Make sure all the ducting's clear. Uh, one of the yep. most common problems that I've actually come across with these on a regular basis is the um, other half in the house or the wife or the husband, whoever, uh, always opens the tumble dryer door to check if the clothes are dry without letting the tumble dryer have its 10 minute cooling down period. Because it's very important for anyone watching this that when you use a tumble dryer and you set it to an hour long cycle, there's 15 minutes in an hour long cycle where the tumble dryer is designed to heat and the heater come on and off as needed. Uh, so if you open the door mid cycle, you're not allowing the last 10 minutes of its cycle to do its job correctly, which is where the machine needs to cool down. Uh, and that takes the heat away from the heating element and therefore stops the 206 thermostat from uh, basically kicking out because they are a one-shot thermostat. Uh, people don't actually always understand what the difference is between a one-shot thermostat and a thermostat. A thermostat is designed to click in and out as the temperature is acquired. A cutout thermostat is a safety device that, with the example, this tumble dryer, it's a 206 thermostat. That means if you uh, exceed 206 degrees up to the top of the heater, it is designed to actually blow and it has to be replaced rather than reset. And this is to stop tumble dryers catching fire. And there's been a lot of uh, problems with tumble dryers over the last few years where tumble dryers have caught fire for many different reasons, and we won't go into that. But these cutout thermostats are specifically designed for this purpose. And if you don't let the machine have its 10 minute cooling down period, or you open the drum mid cycle, or you have bad filters where the fluff has built up, they will go, and it is a common fault. Do you agree with that, Barry? Anything else you can add to it, or Tom? No, absolutely, Paul. Uh, uh, thank you. It's paramount that people get into the routine of cleaning their dryer filters each time they use them, and, and obviously try and avoid leaving the machine on when you're sleeping or unattended in the house. Um, yeah. Little things like that will prevent the a problem happening down the line, like you know, little checks, routine, clean the filter each cycle. So a lot of people don't realise, Barry, um, and one of the things I, I try to teach customers on a regular basis is a, a tumble dryer is no different in principle to a mechanical item like a car. You have to service it occasionally, and this means yep. pulling the tumble dryer out, uh, disconnecting the vent tube if it's a vent tube tumble dryer and making sure that the tube that goes through the wall to the exterior of the house is clear, because these things do build up with fluff over a period of time. And if you're doing a load a day, as many households are doing, the you know I've done many a video where I've uh, stripped down a tumble dryer and I've had half a jumper inside a tumble dryer in, in the, when I say that, in the fluff content. Uh, it's just yeah. been astronomical buildup. I was yeah. going to second that, Paul. That's exactly what I was thinking. Um, the amount of issues that can be caused just by a little bit of lack of maintenance, lack of servicing, um, can actually grow into a much bigger issue if, if people don't look after their appliances. So definitely, mm -hmm. you know, there needs to be a, a routine there. Oh, very much so. It, it, you know, and um, I think the awareness, especially when we're trying to make appliances last longer to keep the environment more friendly with this consumption that we have in the United Kingdom and Europe, is a little bit of maintenance will make your machine last nearly twice as long. And I don't know if you both agree with that. Yeah, not only that, it, it's the efficiency as well, though. I think, um, you know, a dehumidifier, for example, our dehumidifiers, if you don't keep that coil clean or change that filter regularly. Yeah. The, the, heat the heat exchange process just does not work efficiently. Exactly. And this means that you're burning more electricity to actually either dry the clothes or cool. If it's a condenser uh, tumble dryer, which is the new heat pump ones. Uh, if these filters aren't clear, it, the refrigeration process, which is in them, which is yeah. designed to uh, use the heat side to evaporate the water, it, you know, you are going to be using twice as much electricity as you would normally. Yeah. 
Never mind the wear and tear on the appliances. Yeah. Okay, can we have the next question? Uh, to make a lot of noise. Hot point. Yeah, now this is one I actually asked, asked for Barry's help yesterday on. Uh, the Hot Point TVM 572, I believe, uh, from what Barry was telling me, that's a recalled appliance, isn't it, Barry? Yes, certain manufacturer dryers in that range between 2005 and 2015 are on a safety recall list. So if right. they log okay. on to the manu manu manufacturer's website, just check that out, first of all. Maybe it has already been carried out by an engineer, but just check that the dryer so the, has already the, been... I, I answered the question correctly for the customer. I'm just trying to find the exact FAQ a second. Um, but yeah. basically, I told the customer it was the bearing on the machine that would most probably... Because that is one of the most... The pair drop bearing on those... Um, Basically, the shaft wears the bearing and then it starts screeching as it's rub the shaft is rubbing against the chassis. Um, and yep. that is, yeah, I've got the FAQ. Let me just add that to the stream. So this is the, let me just get to the right point. So at the back of the machine here, you have a shaft which comes through. Uh, and this shaft fits inside this pear-shaped bearing and what actually happens over a period of time. And these bearings do go a lot more if you do not maintain your machine because the fluff and the dust inside the machine can actually act as an abrasive material and therefore wear the bearing a lot faster. Uh, so 424 is the pair drop bearing, and that is this bearing here. And it is a common problem. We sell hundreds of these on a monthly basis. Uh, it, it's it's a very um, it, it's a bearing that wears and it's designed to wear and it's not an expensive bearing as you can see it's only six pound ninety five um, and you know it should be replaced every couple of years would you say Barry if the machine's used every day exactly it all depends on the user Paul some people put the washing straight from the washing machine into the dryer which will obviously wear the bearing out a lot quicker than someone who uses the dryer just to, to air out their clothes after being out on the line for the day so it, yeah, it will vary on, remember, on user if i remember correctly barry with these is this the tumble dryer that doesn't have a jockey wheel and is a stretch bearing stretch belt sorry Yep, you're correct on that, Paul. Yeah, these dryers do not have a jockey. So, that, so basically, this would be the reason why the belt snaps as well on this machine on a regular basis, and we sell a lot of the belts, because people are putting heavy loads in, and it's not able to turn the drum. It's just spinning on the motor shaft. Correct. Right. Okay. So I have put some notes to that one for the customer on the uh, – what was the model on this? Uh, TVM572. So let me just quickly go through the chat and see if there's any questions from general public there. Uh, sometimes I'm sometimes I'm really short. I need to. Yeah, I did a video on on. Um, I'll see if I can find it for you. Just bear with me a second. Let me share screens with this one. Uh, I did a couple of videos, as you can see here, under the repair guides, under cookers, and it will go through the most common reasons why an element uh, will trip and also why some cookers overheat as well. Um, where the element's getting too hot. And there's a lot of people that just assume that they need to change a fan of an element and they don't realize the fan is not spinning. Uh, and of course, the element gets hot spots on it because the fan's not turning at the correct RPM. Uh, so there are a lot of videos on here uh, to help people if they go to the repair guides and then to the oven section. So... Um, let me take that one away. Uh, I have a Zanussi washer and the motor bearings are starting to go on it. And I'm not too sure. 
there, you get a hold of the, of the motor. Well, when it comes to washing machine motors, um, washer tech, sometimes the motors are more expensive than the cost or the economical cost to repair the machine. So if you use your model number, sometimes you will be able to find on likes of eBay and, um, oh, give me some of the other uh, gum tree. Uh, you might be able to find a machine with electrical problems uh, where the PCB has gone and you might be able to buy a whole machine for 20, 30 pound. But some of the motors are in excess of 100, 150 pound. And it just becomes not very uh, economic to repair the machine that only costs 300 pounds. So I hope that answers your question there. My Bosch washing machine taking water, clothing. Well, the first thing you want to do with that is, and Barry, jump in here where you can, but um, at the top of the machine, you've got a pressure switch and the pressure switch from the top of the machine runs down to a pressure chamber. And this pressure chamber, sometimes if you're using uh, liquid detergents or powdered, uh, powdered detergents can even cause this problem, the pressure bowl container can actually sludge up uh, and this would cause the water level to be incorrect. Or you may have a problem with the pressure switch itself. Um, any others you can think of, Barry, Tom? Well, one thing that a Bosch does very well is wash and it would be a, a very rare complaint that they don't wash well for, for no reason. Um, I would nearly guarantee you that it's something to do with the detergent that you're using or maybe the machine isn't heating but the machine should alert you with a fault code if that was the case um bosch have a very intelligent washing process in their wash machines which actually gets the job done very thorough um, so i would just check your detergents have you changed your detergents recently um you could put the machine on a service cycle as well too um well, not, all, not all the machines uh, always have a service cycle and the, I did a video recently on mold, I believe, if Ferdinand can find that one and bring it up. Um, but in that video, I show you how to actually clean the inside of the machine, believe it or not, using dishwasher tablets. Um, basically, what I do is I fill the machine with a couple of extra kettlefuls of water so it goes above its normal level. And then I encourage customers to put it onto a boil wash with a couple of dishwasher tablets. And you would not believe the uh, dirt that comes out of the drum. I mean, it was absolutely incredible what I'm just trying to find. Here it is. I found it now. So just bear with me. I will get to the point in the video. I'll be putting that one in our customer services team then, Paula. Well, Learn you... Tom, you look at this. I found the video, so just bear with me. I'll share this on screen. Uh, dee -dee -dee -dee. This is the video that I did. And what... I'll just jump through here. This was mould on a machine, and the mould was built up heavily. Um, the, the actual door seal was a disgrace, and you, as you can see it here. Yeah, and you wait till you see the thickness of this crud. And, uh, you know, this this was all inside the drum. Absolutely incredible. But what we did was clean up the door seal on this machine, um, and we removed all the mold just using bleach. It costs no more than about a pound in material to actually turn a door seal that looks like this into uh let's see if i can find so i put the put it into a detergent but after cleaning all the machine by hand what i did was i put it on a boil wash and look what came out of the machine you won't believe this yeah. and that's in so many machines because they're washing on low temperature cycles 
It's absolutely incredible what sits in between the inner drum and the outer drum and lines all the pipe up. And mold, people don't realize how dangerous black mold is. Um, black mold is a fungus at the end of the day, and it's very, very, very unsanitary to the consumer uh, and can cause lots of, I don't know which illnesses it can cause, but I know after reading some articles with it, it, it does cause lots of problems. Uh, let me come back to you lot. There we go. So I hope that answers your question with that one. Um, Dan has just sent a question in. Are these live Q questions? Y yes, some of the questions that we have done are on emails that have come in during the week. Uh, other questions are basically coming through as you're sending them now, Dan. So uh, if you have a question, feel free to ask it. Just seeing if anything's come in. Nope. So, um, third, can you bring up the next question from this week's emails? Um, Fraser from... Oh, Intercept oven not heating. You fixed my dryer last month. Right, yes, I did do this, and I sent you an email on this as well. Um, so let me just go through to the relevant one on that. Third, could you just drop the link in for the relevant uh, FAQ on that? There we go. So that's, yeah, that's the link on the Indeset ID 2060C2. Uh, and... I will bring up the, so if you go to frequent questions, back to cookers, and that's the last one I done. Now, what I managed to do here for you was not only do all the common faults for you, uh, but with regards, uh, not heating, but the lights and the motors running, everything else is running. 90% chance, again, that it is your fan oven element. But I don't believe you said whether it was a top oven or bottom oven. So let me just go through the two faults for you. If it's your bottom oven, which is the one I suspect, you've got a fan oven element, and the fan oven element is there, which is 506. Now, if you go through the reference numbers here to 506, you will find the fan oven element for this cooker. Just click on the link, and that should take you through to the relevant part. Uh, and again, we have genuine and pattern available. Uh, also, I have put some videos at the top here for you to assist you in changing the element, because I have got a video on the hot point and intercept uh, cookers to change the element. And I've also put two other videos in with regards testing elements and also if it's tripping the electric. So I hope that helps you. If it's the top oven, now the top oven has two elements which are controlled by the thermostat. You have the base element and you have the grill element. So when the top oven is heating, it is using uh, part of the top oven element and it's using the base element to maintain an oven temperature. And if it's your top oven that's not heating correctly, then it will normally be one of these elements that will be causing the problem. Uh, I hope that asks, answers your question on that one. And Ferd's put the link in for you on the side there. Uh, Dan says thanks as well. I don't, I think, uh, what did we answer for Dan? Yeah, no, you just wanted to know if it was live questions and answers. Uh, have we got any other questions, Ferd? No? So that's all the questions up to date. If you do have any questions while we're wrapping up the show, uh, feel free to ask them in the chat, if, even if you're from Facebook or from YouTube, as this stream is going out to uh, all the channels. And I'll just bring in everyone on here. So, well, thanks very much, both of you, for participating today. We'll just wait a minute or so for any questions coming up. Um, we've gone through every week we'll be doing a live show, and we'll have different engineers, different people from different manufacturers on the show. 
Um, I'm very impressed with EBAC, and thanks very much, Tom, for turning up. Um, personally, I think with you producing a drum now, which is which general public are able to change the bearings, might stick a broom in certain other manufacturers' positions to get them to start doing the same. Because, you know, my pet hate in this industry is built in obsolescence. And uh, one of the things that I think uh, all the manufacturers with this global warming and everything else, I, I think all the manufacturers really need to start producing machines like we did back in the 80s and 90s, which is, I mean, we used to have, uh, and tell me, Tom, if you might remember this, um, I think we had Hoover in Merthyr Tidville. We had Hot Point in Peterborough, was it? I'm not sure. I know there were Hot Point in the UK. I'm not sure whereabouts, Paul. Yeah, I think were Junction in Wales. And, of course, we lost a great tumble dryer last year or the year before, White Knight. Yeah, right. um, yeah. I, you know, that was a great machine. Uh, the White Knight tumble dryer was cheap. It was basic. It was built to last. Um, you know, and another company that went to the wall sort of thing and they closed it down. Do you actually know, um, I heard the story once many years ago, how actually White Knight got their name. Either of you know how that happened? I, I know the answer. I'm just wondering if you knew. Told, but, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting. To... <laughs> White Knight were part of Philips, I believe. And the management did a buyout when Philips were shutting the UK factory down. And they, the staff called the management White Knights, in other words, saving the company. And they opened up the whole company on the back of that. And it was a brilliant machine, White Knight. I, I, they did produce washing machines, I think, for a short period of time as well. Um, but the tumble dryers, I thought, were a fantastic machine. Um, they were cheap economic uh when i say economic a person would spend 150 pound on a tumble dryer and it was repairable and it lasted five ten years no problem whatsoever um and when you consider the savings on some uh we just got another question when you s see the savings on some of these heat pump dryers that are only using half a kilowatt per hour of running but they take three hours to dry the clothes and it costs four or five hundred pounds to buy a heat pump dryer. I did some calculations. It take it, you would need the machine not to fail for nine years to actually save the money treat money difference between buying a normal vented dryer and a heat pump dryer. Because you know, you're still using one and a half kilowatts on a three hour cycle, where a vented tumble dryer. Yes, it is using two, two and a half kilowatts of electricity, but it's only drying for one hour. So the difference is one kilowatt. And when you consider one kilowatt, which is what in the UK now, uh, 20 pence a kilowatt, I think it is, somewhere in that region. Yeah. How many kilowatts does it take to save you 300 pounds? Uh, I, I just never see the logic in it. Um, although they are meant to be more environmentally friendly, but if the machine doesn't last eight years, then of course it's not environmental friendly because it's going on a scrappy. And then you've got the cost of the environment with recycling and everything. Uh, how to repair the timer on a 70 series Kenmore washer. Now, I think you'll be asking this from America. Um, now, we're based in UK and Europe, so I do not have any experience whatsoever, apart from commercial laundry equipment, but I'll just have a look at, see if I can see anything. No, that's an American machine. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't got the answer on that one. Um, I will have a look and send you an email on it, um, but I do not know anything about the timers on those machines, sorry. Um, Barry, do you have any knowledge of them? Um, I would assume, Paul, that machine is before my time on this earth. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah. I think you're trying to say I know, aren't you? If we could get more uh, detail on that to see actually what that customer is uh, requiring 
to do to the timer yeah. maybe as, as the timer blown or but mostly timers you can't really take apart without uh, many springs going everywhere <laughs> well when i was living in turkey back in the early 80s i actually did repair cruisette timers and stuff like that i mean you, you had to be able to repair them because you couldn't get the parts it was just yeah. not possible to you know it wasn't a consumer society where you uh, just went and bought a new part because it was a timer that gone you'd have a look at repairing the timer and even to the point of uh, the 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 points inside the old timers because a mechanical timer would be on a rotation basis and it would have loads of plastic cogs in and the points on the actual timers and i'm showing my age here um they would actually carbonize and just with a little bit of sandpaper you could actually clean up the contacts and then put the timer in and it would go on for another five ten years but this is a problem with a lot of relays on modern washing machines nowadays uh they're only built to last so many cycles and uh, the relays in the circuit boards especially with the ag and electrolux tumble dryers for example and the hoover tumble dryers the 16 amp relays that they put in are not lasting more than five, six years. Uh, I did a video on them a few years ago on how to actually replace the relays on circuit boards. But, uh, you know, we have moved into a consumer society a little bit with regards just buying brand new components off the shelf rather than repairing components. And a lot of components aren't really easy to repair, for example, uh, the flow through heaters on dishwashers. Now, I've very rarely ever seen the element go on the flow through heater on the dishwasher. It's always the thermostats that have gone. But the problem being is you can't replace just the thermostat. It's built into the heating element. Do you get a lot of those, Barry? Yep, we get a fair few um, of those, Paul. You're correct. And obviously, they're molded onto the element, so you can't replace the, the tiny component there that is causing all the trouble, which is disappointing, but... Yeah. But they're not that much, uh, they're not that expensive anyway, are they? Um, the flow through heaters no. are only about 20, 30 pound, I think. They're not an expensive item to buy. But when it's a timer yeah. uh, or a control board that's three, four hundred pound to buy, then it's uneconomic to repair. Anyway, we've been running for an hour. So I'd like to thank you both very much for coming on the show. Tom, greatest of luck to you in the future with EBAC. I think it's a fantastic machine. Um, at how to repair, I'm fully behind what I've seen of the machine. Um, as I said, I've got one myself. I love the idea of the hot and cold water fill. Uh, sorry, that's something I didn't mention to you. Uh, because down here in Portugal, for example, 90% of the houses are running on hot solar water, um, which is the uh, collector systems. And of course, houses have got hot water for nothing all the way throughout the year. Um, and of course, with you being able to tap your washing machine into this, you're not using electricity to heat the water up. Uh, and it makes a huge difference on the running costs on uh, washing in the house in Portugal, Spain, Greece, and so on. Uh, so I think that's a, gr a great idea. Um, yeah. Well, I hope, I mean, obviously from, from the conversation we've had today, Paul, I hope uh, it comes, comes becomes apparent that EBAC looks after the customer and, and looks to develop products in the wash machine in this case that lasts um is sustainable and offers features that are beneficial um you know we don't necessarily need bells and whistles we need things that add, add purpose and actually uh, give customers what they need so yeah well, I'm, so, I'm so really and i can i say this from the bottom of my heart i am so glad to see britain starting to move into manufacturing of quality equipment again uh because we you, people do not realize, uh, and let me just give you this as an example. I've, I've done some uh, articles on this. If you consider the 20 foot shipping container only holds about 100 washing machines. In Britain alone, we consume nearly four and a half million washing machines a year. Now, I get that number from doing a basic, um, uh, a basic equation. We have roughly 28 million households in Britain, and we only uh, have washing machines lasting about five, six years. So if you divide the five, six years into the 28 million, you end up with about four million. 
And that's what we're consuming on a yearly basis. Now, if you say a shipping container holds 100 machines and 50% of the machines that are coming into Britain are from places like Korea, China, uh, and places like that, how many shipping containers, and I haven't got a calculator to, uh, to hand to work it out, are coming across, halfway across the world, which are so unenvironmentally friendly. I mean, commercial shipping is the most polluting thing on the planet, including planes, yeah? And we're bringing, you know, I can understand bringing in components like circuit boards because you can get millions of those in a container. But when you're bringing washing machines in, it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Tom. No, I agree. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of lost space in the washing machine, as in there's a lot of air in there. Um, yeah. You know, the bulky components, the cabinets, are a big sort of footprint, big volume, and we can make it in the UK economically, and um, we can build good quality product, products that are that are competitive. So yeah, and employ and, local market as well, and provide jobs needed in Britain. You know, exactly provide jobs for local people and helping the British economy. It's it's all. There's no downsides. Um, some of the components you can't get in the UK because of what we make and what we don't make. I wouldn't expect you to be producing, uh, for example, uh, the circuit boards. I, I doubt very much you're producing them yourself, are you? No, but we do have facilities to produce circuit boards. Um, so, you know, we do do some of the, some of the circuit boards in our products. Uh, right. So there's nothing really out of... Everything's possible. If it could be done in China, it could be done in the UK. Um, it's just some things aren't economically viable to do. But uh, I'm sure that as things develop and as things change, hopefully we'll see more of that come back to the UK and we'll be, you know, we'll be, we'll be in the driving seat for a lot of it. Okay. Well, I'm going to wrap this up because we've been running an hour and I don't want to take up everyone's time. But Tom, thank you very much indeed for coming on the show today. Much appreciated. Love the thoughts that you have with regards to uh, Britain producing our own machine again. Barry from Ireland, who's with, who runs his family business, which is TDA Appliances. You'll be seeing a lot more Barry over the course of the next few months. We'll be trying to get another stream together for you between Christmas and the new year. Uh, but in the new year, we will be running the show on a regular basis to try and help people out with questions and answers. Uh, also, depending if there's anyone watching from Elon Musk's crowd, I would like my Starlink satellite so I can operate from South Wales. But uh, that's just me trying to get my satellite early uh, because the Internet speeds are so bad in Wales. But anyway, thanks very much, all of you, for coming on the show. And have a great Christmas and a happy new year to you all. OK, thanks very much to the general you, public. Paul. And look forward to seeing you in a few weeks' time. Thanks, Paul. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.